Welcome to this podcast and YouTube clip webcast with the French economist Alain Perguez. Alain is an expert on, in particular, modern austerity programs, the Eurozone and the single European currencies institutions. And it's a pleasure to have you with us today, Elaine, to talk about the Eurozone crisis in Europe, but particularly in France. Bienvenue, mon ami. Uh, first, the Eurozone crisis is an event which never happened before and elsewhere. It is the outcome of lies, both by banks and by the government. Contrary to what many people believe, the so-called state bonds are just a tiny share of banks' balance sheet. But French and German banks suffered from enormous losses from their investment in derivative markets. They are more speculators than the US banks were. And so now the blackmail governments to impose austerity programs on a scale which never existed. But behind the financial crisis, there is the total collapse, and really collapse of the Eurozone real economy. According to research I tried to make, official statistics are obviously lies. The effective rate of unemployment in France, Germany, could be around 50 or 60 percent of the active population. Mm -hmm. By effective unemployment people, I include those who are officially unemployed. Mm -hmm. The eight or nine millions of people obliged to survive on charity income, works of Elizabeth I, minus 500 euros a month, which is in France abject poverty, plus Two or three million people obliged to retire before the age of 60 because they are getting too old. Plus, uh, highly uh, trained students obliged to survive 
from probation to probation. Finally, we could think that in terms of unemployment, maybe 60% of the active population, 60% in Germany, are living on barely a subsistence level. At the same time, inflation is rising, contrary to what happened in the early 30s. The office inflation in France and Germany could be 7 or 8% a year. Finally, uh, in terms of growth, mm -hmm. the effective rate of growth in France and Germany is below zero for at least five or six years. And indeed, it is worse in Southern Europe. So, contrary to what many people believe, the Eurozone country is now in a situation worse than it was in the early 30s. Mm -hmm. And we could ask the question why? It is because of governments themselves which are addicted and I emphasize the term addicted to policies of real deflation. Mm -hmm. They cut and cut and cut public expenditures while raising taxes so as to get a full ballot and to do so they impose on the economy a total collapse of the private investment consumption is dropping Private investment is now quasi zero. Private firms, private capitalism is non marxian because Marx assumed that capitalists will stop to invest because of other accumulation. But now the capitalist system is flying from the productive economy. It has been turned into some kind of parasite rentier system. And the last resort crime is the last resort crime is the so called fiscal consolidation pact. A beautiful term which has aspects. The first 
is that all governments committed to cancel budget deficit and to get a surplus. Yeah. While the real economy is dying. And there is worse to be sure that their policy could be maintained. Fiscal policy has been entirely transferred to pure technocratic independent institutions monitoring the decrease in public expenditures and finally even the European Commission is looked as too democratic. Mm -hmm. So we are truly now entering a totalitarian non-democratic system. And this is a disaster. Uh, it is true that some help has been provided, but the European Central Bank turned the least involved. It could be suppressed. It is a useless monarch. Firms are coming from indebtedness of France and Germany towards private banks. All the money is loaned to Greece and Spain to reimburse banks, nothing for the real economy. And which is worse is that governments are completely indifferent to the increasing disaster in terms of real economy, the very fabric of society could die. Yes. As... The system is totalitarian, nobody dares to discuss it. Uh, thank you for those, merci beaucoup mon ami, for those opening remarks and what I am very interested in, Elaine, is your explanation as to why governments across Europe seem to not care about the, the impact that austerity is having on society. You have described this as modern austerity programs creating economic disasters. Why is it, in your opinion, Elaine, that governments are embarked in programmes of austerity? Is this political because the economics do not work? Excellent question. Uh, it is indeed surprising. Uh, I shall try to explain what I wrote in a paper I just finished. Okay. First, European governments, especially core governments and France and Germany, are indeed completely stupid <laughs> relative uh, to Kanzler Merkel 
Inde, François Hollande, Margaret Thatcher, on l'a de Genius. <rire> euh, the Ignore and Misunderstand, The Real Basic Laws of Macro Economics. For instance, they don't understand that banks uh, create money. Uh, second point, they are obviously completely enslaved to the financial markets and banks. Let me explain, I hope, in a simple terms. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, France and German, who heard uh, most of the European public debt, are now addicted to some kind of anti uh, nature law of value. The more governments are destroying the real economy by imposing zero deficits or surplus. The more the market value of public debt is increasing. Yeah. Thanks speculate on a scarcity in the future of public debt and thereby the register in their balance sheet enormous capital gains plus interest rates <coughs> the free imposed on the other side serves uh, two austerity policies there is an enormous increase in what could be deemed the rate of exploitation. The share of profits is rising relative to labor productivity. Thereby, without investing the largest corporation register themselves enormous capital gains. So, finally, austerity policy in Eurozone is not rooted into some kind of neoclassical influence. Initially, it was rooted into the Austrian, Hayekian uh, philosophy of Friedrich Hayek, yes. the most reactionary economist uh, who ever lived, uh, who wrote that the happiest moment of his life was the death of Keynes. It is a policy who ultimately dream of building in Europe the most perfect capitalist society 
which ever existed. I am quoting the advisor of Mitterrand, Jacques Attali, in 1981. They hate the United States for being too soft. And in the very long run, there is a mix of bizarre Catholic theology, the wars of the counter reformation, and imperialist philosophy. Out of their policy, they will completely destroy the negotiating power of labor. Labor income is to collapse. Mm -hmm. So, in the very, very long run, there will be salvation. Yeah. What is deemed super China? Europe could enjoy the highest degree of competitiveness thanks to the lowest <coughs> labor cost in the world. And why yeah, neo-imperialism? Domestic economy doesn't account anymore. All is played on export surplus. But there is a difference between Rosa Luxemburg and Lenin. Both believed that imperialism will be the solution to absorb excess production. Why now imperialism is rooted into the total collapse of domestic aggregate demand and all is turned toward the conquest of external markets even within the Eurozone. It is indeed a total misunderstanding of basic economists. But very few people in civilized country like yours, if I dare say, understand <laughs> the degree of ignorance and I emphasize that stupidity of our leaders. Comparing the French socialist leadership uh, to the new labor of Blair. But Tony Blair was a true socialist. François Hollande is a caricature. Okay. A guy without any knowledge of understanding of economics, hating the state for Hollande financial markets matters. So we are now in the midst of a total cultural disaster, <coughs> which was not the case before. Okay. Th thank you very much, Elaine, for that very detailed response, my friend. And in terms of why governments are actually conducting and embarking and rolling out modern austerity programmes for the reasons that you've described. What are, in your opinion, the potential remedies, the potential solutions to the Eurozone crisis and the global economic crisis? I mean, I would like to just to bring to the attention of our listeners and viewers a very, very prophetic 
academic paper that you wrote yourself, Elaine, in 1999, called The Expected Failure of the European Economic <coughs> and Monetary Union. I can just show it here. We will put details of the website of this. You described the Eurozone project as doomed to fail because if a crisis did arise like the one we are in at the moment, then the European nation states and the institutions that represent Europe would be incapable of fighting their way out of an economic implosion. So, in a very prophetic paper, you have predicted the crisis and the difficulties that would arise. How does Europe get out of the mess that it's in, Elaine? When I wrote uh, this uh, 1919 uh, paper, indeed, I was a prophet. I had to escape <laughs> the faith of the prophets. <laughs> Uh, uh, if I take the case of France and Germany, because the Eurozone is ruled by France and Germany, this is obvious. And Germany will be powerless without the unconditional support of the French. Nobody wants or dares to raise uh, what is going on. There are militants groups in Italy. There are dramatic events in Greece and Spain, in Germany, quasi nothing, and in France, nothing. Uh, second point, for how long could the system survive as it is? Why do you think uh, that the majority of rulers of corporations supported Hollande, whatever uh, they say, for the same reason that French capitalists voted for François Mitterrand, only uh, regime qualified himself a socialist can impose the policy we want. And never the totalitarian cultural life has been so atrocious. So, <coughs> the system could survive as long as one of the players decide to reject the austerity policy. France and Germany certainly no. Greece and Spain doesn't matter. Greece is already under the control of it. In Spain, the neo Frankist government asked the king to declare the martial law. The king uh, refused. In France, nothing happens. But ultimately, the system cannot survive with a financial system and a currency 
which is supported uh, by uh, dead or dying economy. It is uh, a new prophecy sooner or later there is to be a collapse. Because now, according because of austerity programs, public expenditures are really cut uh, to the bones soon. What will remain in public expenditures just to repay the debt. Public services are destroyed. People are dying, even in France, in emergency, uh, in the hospitals. University are slums. <coughs> so, soon or later collapse. But solution is obviously to reject the UA system. We must clearly understand that the so-called single currency was never just a single currency. It was, if I dare say, the, the way to impose a new public order inspired by the philosophy of Friedrich Hayek on Europe. A public order rooted into the hate of the Republican state or of the state himself. And why do they hated the state? Because the state only exists as an obstacle to the market laws. The key principle, the credo of the UA system is the dismantling <coughs> of the state, the privatization of the state, the fact that now the state is nothing but a private corporation corporation which is wasting resources. It is why they split all connection between Treasury and the Central Bank. The state has to finance itself by bank loans as if it were some kind of uh, bad, non-productive corporation. And all uh, started from that. And instead of changing the rules, the UA ruling elite is unceasingly reinforcing the absurd, the anomaly character of the system, some kind of a system coming from another universe. The euro is now in Europe something like a new religion. Uh, thereby, 
in uh, this was Italian conferences with said with friends of mine that a country like Italy should get rid of the euro and it will lead, I think, to some kind of uh, zone by Greece and Spain. There is no way of any uh, euro for the people. It is exactly as if we asked uh, His Holiness in the Vatican to decree that God doesn't exist. <laughs> okay. Those people are fanatics, with real fanatics. But indeed, the problem is how to impose that solution which doesn't imply at all uh, drop of standard of living. Yes, exactly. With politicians completely uh, brainwashed and who reject and refuse any discussion, demoted in the Eurozone. And this is the disaster. In France, there is no more democracy. As soon as within the Party Socialist you want to discuss, you are fired by decree of the President. Mm -hmm. So it could only start from a mass movement to enlighten the people which is dramatic is that there is no uh, uh, like yours uh, in most of Europe and, and especially uh, in France and Germany. Okay. Elaine, that's, that's a really fascinating response once again and I'm sure people listening on YouTube and watching on YouTube and listening on our iTunes channel will be fascinated by your analysis of the root causes of the crisis in Europe, how in your opinion the system is doomed to collapse because of the way that the Eurozone was set up in the, in the first place and that the only way, in your opinion, to respond to the policies of austerity is to resist, and that this must happen principally in France and or Germany, who are the powerhouses of the European Union. Elaine, it really just leaves me to thank you uh, merci beaucoup pour votre participation in this conversation with USI. Um, it's fantastic to get an analysis from France and what you have described as the real unemployment levels that are in France and not the ones that are released by the official bodies who produce the statistics. I'm sure that when we look all over Europe, we can see in countries like Spain and in Greece the complete massaging of the official unemployment statistics, whether it's through people on temporary work, part-time work, seasonal work, the forcing of people to leave, stay in education also in order to deflate the real employment statistics is a really important factor that we hope that USI is helping to illuminate and to ensure that we give a very forensic analysis and critique of what is the real economy, 
what is the real situation that is happening in countries within Europe and your conversation with us today is a very, very valuable part in our efforts to work with trade unionists and academics to illuminate the real situation that is on the ground, the real pain that is being unleashed across Europe and how the fabric of society is being torn apart. Elaine, thank you very much for your participation and we look forward to future conversations with you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.